The day after I made my YouTube video, um, the electrician came back and he finished uh, the installation work. So he was uh, on my site for a, a, a day and on that day, it was a whole day, he did a couple of hours of loft wiring. Um, he then uh, mounted the inverter, which you can see on this picture to the right, and the hot water controller, which is on the left. Um, there was also a generation meter, which is next to the isolator beneath the uh, uh, inverter. And then there's uh, an export meter, which you see in the junction box, uh, just going down below there. Um, that was about three hours worth of work. Um, it was about an hour to do the commissioning. Um, and then there was a couple of hours of fault finding. And uh, in that time, he was trying to get the export meter to communicate via Modbus uh, serial link to the inverter. So he got that fixed. And uh, once that was all done, uh, it was good to go. Okay, so uh, electrician is uh, away for lunch and uh, here is the progress. So. We have got the inverter and the hot water controller installed. So all of the uh, DC cabling comes in through this isolator. It goes into this uh, inverter. So there's two strings you can see here. And then we've got the AC cable going out here into this IC isolator. Uh, and then that goes down into the consumer unit. Uh, there's going to be a new circuit breaker here. Um, we've got a, an energy meter here. We've got this cabling here. That goes to this current transformer right there. Um, and then we have a Modbus connection which goes up into the uh, uh, solar edge inverter. Uh, we've got a network cable which goes down into the network switch. Uh, and then we've got uh, a hot water controller. So this is um, uh, a mains cable going in and you've got uh, the hot water consumer going out. Now, for some reason, um, uh, this doesn't use Modbus communications. It uses uh, a wireless uh, Zigbee protocol to communicate with the inverter. Uh, I'm not too sure uh, why that is, but the manual uh, basically says uh, nothing about uh, a Modbus connection and my installer says it's uh, likely to be because um, your hot water controller uh, is going to be quite a long way away from your s inverter um, so that's the reason for that. Uh, I'm not familiar with Zigbee so that's progress and I reckon, oh yeah, and there's a, another uh, energy meter here. This is, um, I think that's gonna be used for uh, for uh, uh, feed-in uh, tariff metering or um, uh, smart export guarantee metering. I think that's uh, what that's all about. So one's used for control, this energy meter, and this one's just used for information. Right, progress and Let's go upstairs. So you can see uh, the uh, cabling coming in here. So this is uh, one of the penetrations from the solar panels uh, into the loft space. And you can see they use these MC4 connectors. And uh, uh, we've got the uh, cabling uh, from the other uh, uh, roofing face coming down here. This is uh, DC cabling. It's uh, rated to a thousand volts. So uh, there's a fair bit of juice that comes through these cables. According to my data sheets, 
Um, you've got 14 uh, solar panels on a string and uh, those 14 panels uh, end up yielding um, 60 watts per panel at full load. 60 volts, so that's about 880 volts per string. So it's a good amount, it's a good amount of DC voltage. So, yep, that's how it looks like inside uh, my loft in terms of the wiring. Okay, let's get back to it. The next day, uh, I got three kilowatt hours on days number one and two. Um, I got six and a half kilowatt hours on the third day. And today, uh, as I film this, um, I got just under one and a half kilowatt hours of electricity. In all of those days, all the electricity generated during the day was enough with surplus to cover all of my daytime uh, typical uses for my house. And it's in mid-November and in my house I've got a laptop and a monitor running, I've got lights, I've got an internet radio, I've got a dehumidifier, um, I've got a kettle going from time to time and the kettle is the only thing which wasn't sufficiently covered in full. There was plenty of surplus even today um, on this cloudy day uh, to run the hot water controller. Okay, um, here it is. This is my system. It is now energized. So, um, brief tour of uh, my cupboard. Um, out here, you can see it just fits uh, straight into uh, what used to be my uh, uh, a general cupboard. It's now more of a power station. So, uh, what you're seeing here is uh, uh, the state of the system just before dawn. So, the blue light uh, indicates um, internet connection. And the flashing green light uh, says it's not producing power. Again, we've also got a solid red light here, which tells me that no flowing electricity has been measured. Um, this will be flashing uh, once for every watt hour of exported energy. So um, at eight kilowatts, you would be seeing that flashing a bit more than every half a second. Um, so uh, that's how fast that will flash uh, under those circumstances. But uh, under cloudy conditions, um, my experience over the last day is that it doesn't flash quite so much. So over the last two days, this is how I've been using it. But I found a different way of uh, using it. So um, let's go on to uh, onto this. Um, this is called the uh, setup. So if we go on to setup here, um, it's wanting to scan a QR code. And over here, you'll see a QR code. So what we'll do is just scan it and then we move this uh, lever here and then hit continue and then we wait for Wi-Fi to connect and then we join it. <coughs> And setup is uh, something which um, uh, installers use to commission the uh, solar edge. Um, it was my impression that this was only available to installers um, and homeowners can use this. But it turns out that setup has got something called a view only mode. So this is what you see on the uh, application. There's no production being used at the moment and I'll go outside and show you why. You can see that it's connected to the Ethernet. We've got a Modbus and a Zigbee connection. Um, so as you can see over the last two days, um, it's generated 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours. So we'll go outside and, uh, and we'll talk about that. So dawn is getting on. 
we're about uh, seven minutes or so before dawn and uh, there's been a bit of snow overnight and that should all quickly evaporate. It's a day of uh, blustery showers from the north, a bit wintry uh, and uh, there should be some good sunshine in between. So yeah, we're not generating electricity just yet, um, but very soon we should be. So it's now about half, half an hour after sunrise. Um, we are getting about 80 watts of power uh, coming from the solar panels. Um, so it's um, not yet sunny on my roof. Um, there is plenty of blue sky around. Um, but uh, not uh, yet uh, sunny. It's still not bright enough to get uh, uh, even a, a cloudy day kind of output. Uh, I reckon you should get about 200 to 300 watts out of this uh, during the uh, uh, main part of the day. So it's mid-November and uh, that's so far how the performance is looking. Well we've got some sunshine really struggling to get through the clouds. Nothing direct. I think really bright, but we're getting 700 watts now uh, onto the solar panels, which are still covered in ice. So this is about uh, an hour and 20 minutes after sunrise. Um, so 700 watts is m m far more than enough to uh, uh, run all of my uh, daytime electricity loads. Okay, so um, we now have received nearly two kilowatts of uh, power. Um, the sun's come out. It's still quite soft. It's not the strongest of sun, um, but we have it nonetheless. Okay, well, it's um, it's now three hours after sunrise. It's uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, power production with cloudy skies is about 570 watts. And in the middle of November, that's not bad. Okay, so now we have got uh, direct sunshine on this uh, house. So as you can see, um, no direct sunshine on here. And the reason for that is this tree is getting in the way. So that's, uh, it's lunchtime and that is what is uh, uh, causing a bit of uh, darkness. So the overall output is about uh, 1.3 kilowatts um, but before the tree got in the way I was getting 2.8 kilowatts. Um, we're getting just under 2 kilowatts uh, from this. Um, the panels out the front of the house are, uh, are um, in the shade now. Um, as you can see uh, there's quite a lot of pine needles um, which have accumulated after the strong winds from yesterday. Um, they are gradually uh, uh, disappearing. Um, there have been pine needles before and um, it's been uh, this large tree right here. It uh, is an annual feature at this time of the year and um, it's one of the concerns I've had about uh, maintenance when it comes to solar panels. Um, one of the questions I've been asking myself is uh, whether this will reduce the performance of the solar panels. Well, it's now four days after the uh, solar panels went live. And uh, I've now been given the monitoring uh, account for uh, the inverter. And uh, this is uh, what you see. Um, it gives you a full uh, picture of um, how the solar panels are supplying your house. Um, at the moment, it's night time and we've got the oven running and it's uh, uh, running at about eight to nine hundred watts under thermostatic control. Um, if you see uh, what we've done for today, we get this nice graph. So we were generating about 400 watts, um, all self-consumed during the daytime under heavy cloud conditions. Um, there was a heavy load at the beginning, that was just me running a kettle. Um, and at the moment we've got uh, some oven drive going on. Um, but during the middle of the day, whilst I was working from home, all of my energy needs were being uh, sustained. So this is pretty much the worst kind of uh, scenario. Uh, 1.6 kilowatt hours, 
Let's go back one day. So this was the day I was just talking about on the video. Um, this gap here is the tree getting in the way and you could just get, um, you, you could almost run your kettle at some point um, and the rest of the time. So the hot water wasn't configured to take the surplus electricity at this stage. So um, a lot of this electricity was exported um, and the uh, current clamp meter uh, wasn't uh, configured correctly either. So there are a couple of teething issues um, but Solar Edge technical support were very, very good. Um, one of the advantages with this inverter is that because it's connected to the internet, um, the, um, the guys at Solar Edge can uh, log into the inverter and apply whatever corrections need to be done. Um, I sent an email out about uh, the uh, uh, import and export metering. You can download CSV files uh, straight from the monitoring site. And I was a bit uh, suspicious about the fact that there was um, uh, consumption and production almost matching. And I opened this uh, file. One of the things you could see was that your import was 1.21 watts during the night time. And that just struck me as being out by a factor of 100. Um, so I Got onto the uh, got onto the email with uh, Solar Edge support, and uh, they came back 20 mi minutes later saying that the current transformer rating was set incorrectly uh, during commissioning. Um, so it was increased from a rating of one amp to a rating of 100 amps. Um, so yeah, as you can see, 3.36 uh, watts. That's that's going to be pretty good um, for uh, for your morning breakfast if you could if that's all you had to consume for your electricity. But um, I know better. Um, it was all sorted out. Uh, now I've got fantastic. The I've, I've got very good accurate recordings. So not only can you see the um, generation. Uh, from the solar panels you can also see how much your uh, hot water uh, consumer is using so if you go here and you go to smart home and then you uh, click on the hot water controller i'm not too sure why it's called a, a level control a level control something else um, this to me is a, a thermostatic controller have a look at the power and you can see even on this cloudy day there isn't much heat going into the hot water controller, but it's better than uh, electricity going out to the grid. Um, this is worth more to me uh, going into here. Now on a sunny day, I expect um, the hot water tank to actually uh, get a good amount of uh, electricity, even, even in November. So this is... Uh, Fantastic for somebody like me who likes numbers and likes uh, doing my research with the numbers. This portal is brilliant. The support's been very good. Um, I didn't like it, it, didn't sit easy with me having uh, an inverter which you couldn't control as a homeowner. Um, in order to commission the inverter, you need to have an account with um, Solar Edge. Uh, as an installer um, and that works fine and um, even if the connection to the internet is broken for whatever reason um, your inverter is still going to work fine it's still going to do its duty um, now one of the things about the smart home function is that you can set uh, a schedule um, for if you want to switch your hot water on or off. On this web page, I can switch on my hot water tank straight away just by clicking the on here. Um, I'm not gonna demonstrate that now, but it's just fantastic that you've got this kind of control uh, right here. Um, there's various alerts you can get, so there's a lot of diagnostics uh, which is available. Um, and again, uh, there's reports, site status, commissioning and so on. And then you've got a layout. This is something that my uh, electrician, Barry Chapman, he set this up. So you can see what the overall performance of the panels looks like. Um, 
on different days. So for example, this is the uh, performance today. Um, yesterday when we had strong sunshine, uh, these panels weren't performing as well as the other panels because you had your roof getting in the way. Um, so if I went, if I scroll back one day, for example, I'm not too sure how to do that. Oh, don't know how to do that. Don't know how to do a timeline. Okay, but you can get weekly and monthly uh, performance figures um, uh, and even annual performance figures. And that will tell you whether there's anything particularly wrong with one of the panels. So that's really good for diagnostics. Um, and the other advantage with the optimizers is that if you get partial shading, um, without the optimizers, you uh, the performance of that shaded panel drags down the performance of all the other panels to the same uh, voltage. Whereas with these solar optimizers, um, uh, a poorly performing panel um, uh, keeps uh, the rest of the panels uh, unaffected. And that's, that's fantastic. That's, what, that, that's the value I was getting. Um, and the addition, uh, there's one final advantage with having optimizers. And that is, if it's not connected to the inverter, um, then the voltage uh, across the optimizer terminals is reduced to one volt. And that's fantastic for uh, any uh, maintenance and modifications you need to do. Um, if, you are in, if, if you don't have that, you get the full voltage and you can't control it. So batteries. That's what's next. Not now. I'll probably leave it a year. But if I'm right, I reckon my electricity bill will be reduced in half just by having solar panels. But the remaining half, um, I need to have batteries to do that job. So if I can reduce my bill down to just a, trickle, uh, a trickle of electricity based on my existing grid electricity consumption, so I'm not including a, an electric car at this stage, then what I need to do is, is have one megawatt hours per year displaced from the daytime to the nighttime. So on average, that's about 2.7 kilowatt hours per day. And I want to evaluate the economics of that. So there's a few examples um, which hover around the five kilowatt hour mark. Some, some are more, some are, some are less. So on the more expensive side, we've got the LG Chem battery. So let's go take a look at that one. It's a, a website I use that seems to be one of the best prices you can get. Um, not by much, but um, it's certainly the best retail prices. So in here, um, I was looking at a seven kilowatt hour high voltage uh, DC coupled battery. Um, and as you can see, um, this one includes your, um, uh, it's called the uh, solar edge, it's called the store edge um, battery interface, it includes your actual battery includes an export meter, which I've already got, so we can delete that from the, uh, from the bill of materials. Uh, current clamp meter, uh, and something else. Don't know what this is, um, but that's, for, that's uh, 5,800 quid, so I reckon maybe 5,500 pounds um, without the export meter and, and the other ancillary components that we've already got. All right, so the, uh, the LG Chem is one option. And uh, as I've shown you, you don't need the export meter because we've already got that um, as part of the hot water controller. So we get some economies there. But there's another option. This is the Pylon Tech uh, three and a half uh, kilowatt hour uh, module. It's about a thousand pounds. There's extra things you need on top of that. Let's go take a look at that one. All right, so this is a Pylon Tech. So lots of ancillary equipment, um, and I haven't included that in the cost. What is interesting is this item here. 
This is a three and a half kilowatt hour battery module. Um, and as you can see, it's rack mounted. Um, and if I was to look at the data sheet, here's a few features about it. It's got um, a cycle life of uh, 6,000 cycles. So thinking of that in terms of days, you'll have one cycle per day. Um, so I reckon it would last somewhere between 15 and 20 years, according to this. And that's three and a half kilowatt hours. So that could, um, that could cope with the average um, uh, shift of electricity from daytime to nighttime for my house. Um, personally, I think I need more than that. Um, my overall electricity use has always been around six and a half kilowatt hours per day. So I'm really hoping that with solar panels, I can get half of that uh, used um, when there is solar power. And that means the remaining half can, uh, can be covered by, by nighttime. So it's a lot cheaper, and, um, but it's low voltage. So it doesn't couple so easily to a high voltage DC um, uh, bus. And the other thing is, is that it's not integrated in with uh, solar edge um, uh, hardware, but it is much, much cheaper per kilowatt hour. So if we have a look at what else you can get with Pylon Tech, um, for the same price as the uh, LG option, you can get a 14 kilowatt hour solar battery bank. Um, and it's low voltage. I don't know why the high voltage battery banks are more expensive, um, but uh, I haven't looked into uh, what the circuitry is uh, in high voltage compared to low voltage. I just imagine that it's battery, more battery cells connected in series. Um, but that may not be the case. I think they probably use uh, uh, DC boost converters um, more than anything else. So that's what we've got. That's one option. Um, and it's very, very scalable. So you can, you can, you can even get 2.4 kilowatt hours, get four of those and you can stack it up. But these prices have been coming down um, fairly quickly. I can't remember precisely, but I'm sure a few months ago, these prices were higher, uh, noticeably higher. So in a, a year's time, I reckon it could be a lot cheaper. So that's the two. Those are the two options, either end, either side of that um, five kilowatt hour um, nominal mark. Um, I've always looked at a 10 kilowatt hour historically, but this is actually the first time I've done some, uh, some serious research into the economics of it. So the question is, are batteries worth it? And to make them worth while, you have to consider the fact that I'm getting paid five and a half pence per kilowatt hour to export electricity, and I'm paying seven pen, 17 pence per kilowatt hour uh, to bring electricity in from the grid. So if I can uh, shift electricity from the daytime to the nighttime, that's 12 pence per kilowatt hour. But in addition to that, you need to consider the fact that batteries are not efficient 100%. So when you take a, a kilowatt hour and you put it into the battery, you only get 90% of that coming back out. Um, some people have measured 85%, other people have measured more. Uh, but 90% is a good round number. So we'll work with that. So overall, um, 1.2 megawatt hours saving per year is 130 quid a year at the moment. And when you take inflation into account, that's just under 2,000 pounds over 10 years that you can save. So on a flat rate electricity bill, that seven kilowatt hour uh, battery from LG Chem, uh, it's not gonna be worth it. Um, it's, it will take 25 years to pay for itself. Um, the overall cost per kilowatt hour is 1,200 pounds. Um, and you're probably looking at 10 to 15 years in terms of an expected lifetime. So um, it's not economic on any measure.
related to electric uh, flat rate bills. Pylon Tech, on the other hand, I think is going to need a lot more study. The, the numbers are much cheaper. So instead of you, you, you're paying a third of the cost per kilowatt hour, um, and you know the payback that you get for using that will probably be similar to the life expectancy. It will probably be shorter, but I haven't got enough information at the moment. Um, if I was to invest in that right now, um, I think it's only worth doing so for the sake of gaining experience on uh, on batteries. You're not doing it to actually make any profit at this stage. So only enthusiasts, I think, would, would use it. But, is it worth it? Um, I think having a, I think looking at electricity as though it's just a, a flat price is going to become an old-fashioned way of thinking about this thing. So, with electricity tariffs in the United Kingdom at the moment, uh, you can get a variable rate of electricity. So, you pay a different price depending on the time of day. Um, that is an option. It's not the only option, um, but it will become increasingly uh, uh, widespread. So big house batteries, like the 7 kilowatt hour option, um, could be economic. Um, and the other thing about big house batteries is that you need to consider your options if you're susceptible to uh, blackouts because of uh, storms. If you're subject to that, um, you don't even need to ask, uh, argue about economics. Economics is measured in terms of uh, lost income by not having power when it comes to working. So um, in the United Kingdom, we've got uh, a company called Octopus Energy, and um, they are a very new electricity company, but they have become very popular um, very quickly. Um, and one of the uh, attractions to, with Octopus Energy are uh, some of the variable electricity rates. So um, you've got this uh, tariff called the Octopus Go tariff. They offer five pence per kilowatt hour at night time uh, for four hours each night. So between half past midnight and half past four in the morning, um, you could, if you have a sufficiently large battery, say uh, 12 kilowatt hours, you can uh, have an instant 75% reduction in your electricity bill just by taking all of your electricity in that four hour window and then using the battery to power your house the rest of the time. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't even need solar panels for that. Um, and uh, uh, you, you can do the maths for your own house and you can figure out whether that um, uh, makes a battery worthwhile. They offer a fixed day rate of 14.3 pence per kilowatt hour. There's VAT on top of that. Um, other references to uh, prices in the past in my presentations, they've included VAT. Uh, this doesn't include VAT. Um, there's the same export price um, for your solar panels. There's also a tariff called the Agile Tariff. Um, and this is for, uh, in order to take full advantage of this tariff, you really do need a battery. So um, you get what are known as day ahead prices. So every day um, they will give you uh, a list of your um, prices that you pay for the next day at different times of the day. And then you can use that to um, plan your consumption uh, tactics using your battery. And there are some batteries which have got software which takes full advantage of this. Um, you also get the same deal with uh, export tariffs. So if you've got uh, a bright sunny day where everyone's got solar panels and they're all exporting at the same time, that will suppress the price of electricity uh, during the day. But if you've got a battery, you can take that electricity and you can export it in the evening time and uh, you can get a, a better price for your sunshine on your roof. Um, 
And then there are other times when you actually get paid to consume electricity. So if you've got uh, an abundance of winds, stormy days, or you get a nice sunny daytime, or both together, um, then you can get um, then you get a very unusual situation, and it's not that unusual on the wholesale market, but on the retail market, it, it's, um, it's this is the first product uh, that I've seen uh, which uh, which offers this. But the flip side of all of that is that um, if you consume electricity at the wrong time, you can be paying 35 pence per kilowatt hour. That's your maximum price that you can pay at the moment. Um, and that corresponds to high demand periods where there isn't quite enough uh, generating capacity. And an example of that will be when you've got a winter's night and it's cold and dark and uh, there's no wind. Um, those are your those are your difficult ones and that's what your prices are reserved for. Um, but at the same time, if you've got electricity in a battery, you can also get paid a good amount during that same period. Um, so it's all it all starts to become very tactical and um, there is software which can help you with that. And I think this is going to be the way things go. But I haven't done the calculation to see whether it's worth getting a big battery just for those variable prices. So, yeah, you've probably figured out already I have signed up to Octopus Energy. And the other thing to note is that there is £50 for you and there's £50 for me if you use the link right here. Um, to sign up to Octopus Energy. I have never done advertisement for uh, before, but, um, but uh, yeah, who wants 50 quid? I'm sure I do, and I'm sure you do too. So never ever sign up for Octopus Energy unless you use uh, my link. All right, so uh, I just want to give a big thank you to uh, Barry Chapman Electrical Services um, and uh, just give you his details. So his website is called bcsolar.co.uk. Um, he's been installing solar panels for a good long time. Uh, so he, the best way to call him is the telephone number here and he can, uh, he can just give you the best advice. Um, he's been in the village and he's um, He's uh, well regarded. He does general electrical work um, as well as um, solar panels. Um, so um, give him a shout, uh, get a quote from him and uh, discuss your requirements. And thank you for watching.